Hello, my name is Jake from Firestorm Games, and I'm here today with the Tabletop Spotlight. Today we're looking at Jaws of the Lion for Gloomhaven. So this is a 1-4 player, fully cooperative, adventure fantasy game with fighting. I mean, it is a roleplay game in a board game. You do have decisions to make, but it's combat. Combat is, is one of the major themes and focuses for this game. Individual missions can take anywhere from 30 minutes to 2 hours. You do get a bit of a warning that some of them are going to be a bit longer, so it doesn't surprise you like it does in main Gloomhaven. Sit down for just one more game, we squeeze one in. Three hours later, still fighting. So I'm going to try to avoid comparing this entirely to Gloomhaven at every stage through this. And that's, that's because so many of you will have already encountered Gloomhaven, and that's great. We'll talk a bit later about the similarities and differences. But if you're coming to this brand new because you've heard of Gloomhaven and you were advised maybe Jaws is the place to start, exactly right this is what we're going to talk about today what is this game and why is it fantastic so overall a play session will involve you dealing with the overview playing through missions trying to complete the mission goals in between missions you will have encounters usually in a tavern you'll get to buy new equipment upgrade your characters etc and you'll progress the main plot at its core the most important aspect of this is your character so you have these cool character sheets they tell you how many cards you get very important we'll come to that in a moment they tell you how many hit points you've got, and they have a nice little summary on them as well. Very handy. So cards. Cards are the key point of this game. Every turn you will play two of these cards, and you'll pick one to be at the top of the pile and one to be underneath. The reason you have to select that is the one at the top of the pile has a number in the middle. That is your initiative. So the lower that is, the quicker you're going to go in the initiative order that turn. But equally, if there's a tie, the higher up the initiative gets moved towards or attacked in preference. When it is your turn to act, you take your two cards and you pick one top ability and one bottom ability to resolve. And you don't have to choose when you select the cards, you choose at the moment it's your turn. So suddenly things have changed and you don't need to make a range attack or suddenly you, you do need to make a range attack because somebody else has killed the thing you were in melee with. Uh, or something else has happened, you need to run the length of the board as quick as you can, which you didn't expect to a moment ago. Basically, most abilities can be split into three. They're attack abilities, they're movement abilities, or they're in the Grandmaster other piles. So that includes putting up shields, that includes having traps laid, running through doorways, doing special abilities. So they exist through all characters. If you ever see this little star icon, that means you gain experience for doing it. If you see these magic icons, then you generate uh, magical energy, which certain characters can then use, because you infuse the battle area with nature magic which can be useful for somebody to then produce a leaf hurricane or something like that and this final icon down here this means that you trash the cards that means that when you've resolved it it's usually very powerful but it's gone from the game every other card you pop in your discard pile when you run out of cards or any time before if you want to you can choose to rest if you short rest then you pick up your cards and you shuffle something lose it from the game and then pick everything else up and, and that goes back into your hand if you long rest then you skip your entire turn, you heal two hit points, which is quite important, and you pick which card goes, which again, it gives you the control so you don't lose the one thing you need to keep. But sometimes short resting is required because you need to keep pushing on as quick as you can. If you ever can't, you're knocked unconscious. You, you're out of the mission. Doesn't mean you lose, not unless everybody has fallen out of the mission, but it does mean some of the characters with a very low card count can burn themselves out very quickly. It's very common with mage characters, magic confused ones. They will do things, they'll burn cards, they'll do lots and lots of effects, but they just won't have the staying power that comes with a big brute who tanks things, has 12 cards in hand. It's going to be there from minute one to the very last stage of the game. So I love this game because every turn feels like a small puzzle you're trying to unlock. And over the course of an entire mission, that's lots of small puzzles. As a team, you're working together trying to work out, well, how do we do this? If you run over there behind the barrel, you'll draw this guy over to you. I'll then fire at him and, and maybe try and I don't know, set him on fire or knock him unconscious or something like that. You are trying every turn to work out what the best options are from what's available. And you can't discuss specifically what's in your hands, but when it's time to flip over your cards, there is that moment of, well, actually, that's really good. Why don't you run over there and, um, and lay a trap in front of them in the doorway? Because then when they run through, boom. So one of my absolute favourite parts of Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion is the map book. So I will we'll discuss main Gloomhaven. It's beautiful. It's fantastic. But there's a fair amount of setup and put down um, in that game because you have to set up all the tiles and they don't click together like things like Descent. So although they're big maps and you love them, the map book in Gloomhaven is just beautiful. What mission are we playing? 30. Okay, open the book. There's the map. We now run across it and play. If it's a big map, there's this extra supplement but it just slides onto the bottom or the side, makes it a bit bigger, gives you some extra options or give the game designer extra options to produce bigger missions for you. I cannot rate this book highly enough. 
and the fact that they can produce expansions by producing a new scenario book for you to play through is immense. This is huge. Jaws of the Lion has been described by some people as Gloomhaven light. I feel that is unfair. It's lighter, it's not light. Gloomhaven is immense. It, we're 300 hours into our main Gloomhaven box. It's amazing, it's huge. It deserves to be number one on Board Game Geek. Jaws of the Lion is the game to play first. So this is the game to teach people to play with, to give people a taster of Gloomhaven. This is the one you can keep coming back to. If you want to play through this campaign, just over the course of a month with some friends for something a bit different, you can. Gloomhaven is a huge epic undertaking. It's like starting Buffy from episode one all over again, or X-Files, or anything you newer kids watch on stream. It's a huge undertaking. Jaws of the Line is much more like sitting down to watch a movie by comparison to a seven series long next generation fest. The characters are fully compatible with main Gloomhaven, and we've even brought Gloomhaven characters into Jaws of the Line, just give them a try. Takes a little bit of fudging around some of the special abilities, because Jaws of the Line doesn't have all of the keywords. It doesn't have fly, for example, from the enemies, because it's a bit more complicated, so we've left that in main Gloomhaven. We've replayed the story more than once. As you play through, there are some A and B choices, which as you choose A, that shuts off B. So you play through again, you go through... It's a little bit like Resident Evil 2. It's, it's that feel to it, where you want to play it again to see what you've missed, and find out the other options that were available. I would recommend the app to anybody. It's an unofficial app, but there are Gloomhaven AI helper apps out there, and they're huge. They help take care of the hit points for monsters. They reduce the clutter on your table. They're absolutely fantastic. I use that every time, and Jaws of the Line is on most of those as well now. For anyone out there who's familiar with Gloomhaven and has decided not to get Jaws of the Line, you are missing out. For anybody out there who's looked at the Gloomhaven and gone, it's big, it's expensive, I don't know how often I get to play it, I physically can't just carry it on the train to play at my local like games meetings in the pub, Oh, I miss those. COVID has, yeah, we'll come back to all that in a few months when we can do it again. But yeah, this is the light version. It is lighter than Gloomhaven. It is still fantastic. It still has so much depth to it. Really, I implore you, have a good look at it. Right, have a look on Board Game Geek at the images for the components. This is absolutely fantastic. If it hadn't sold out immediately when it came out initially, I think we'd be seeing a lot more people talking about it online now. But it's finally back in print. It's finally back in stock at firestormgames.co.uk. I mean, links are in the description below as always. Please check it out. I can't rate this highly enough. I love it.